beautiful one for you today. This is a house, a mid terraced as you can see. Have a look. Look at all these houses. Oh, let's give them a tickle. Beautiful. Beautiful. So you can see it's really, really mid. And got a little bit of treat for you today. Wall ties. I'm not sure if you've all heard about these wall tie issues that you can potentially have. So we've come out to this property to do the lettings. So I'll give you a, a little bit of a lowdown of events. So we've come to the property. We started stripping the wallpaper to do a little bit of a mini refurb on it to get it let out. Bit of a plug here because we do lettings. We started to clear out all the old tenants things and then we started stripping the wallpaper, as you can see in the background, tickle. And then come to the back room. So these cracks that you can see where my finger is there, going across and then there, and then there. This is wall tie failure. So what wall tie failure basically means is when a bricklayer is bricking up, they use um, they used to use some steel ties that were like uh, two triangles upside down, a little bit like a, a figure eight. I'll get a picture on the screen about now. And what they used to do is put that between the two courses of brick. So what you can generally do is stand there and look at the brick and this is so where the bricks are like this, so they stretch a bond, so oh, the fingers right, one after the other. Normally every three or four courses you'd see a header like this, which would then say that the, the brick has been put long ways, which ties it in. So in other words, the, the length of the brick there is the thickness of the wall, because what you do is you take that brick out and turn it round and lay it this way on top. So that then the brick would go from the outside to the inside and then that would give the wall strength because that and that, that would also dictate the thickness of the wall. Where what they've done here is they've actually just put some heads in. They've just put some headers in as we call them um, to just fill in the gaps because there's actually not a cavity in there, it's two separate skins. So what they've done is they put steel, steel ties in between and what happens is over time, because obviously the cement's wet when it's put down, you get the rain, you get the weather, you get all the stuff, it eventually with mild steel, it starts rusting. And when it rusts, obviously it increases in size. And this is old ash mortar. So if you look at this, it's black. So I've already got black stuff on there, and I can actually virtually pull it apart with my fingers. And on my hands are like, it's like charcoal. So what happens? As it rusts, it expands and then it breaks away. So if you look, look closely, can you see the gap underneath? So all the way along here, the cement is no longer sticking to the brick. So then, you know, I, I'm, I can physically feel that moving. But yeah. So that is wall tie failure, and that's the reason. So how we stop it nowadays, we actually use the same ties. We build what's called a cavity. I'll try and get a picture on there now. Ding! And the picture of the new one is a stainless steel, which doesn't rust. And that's how we build it now. But older properties, and these are the signs. These are the things to look out for. So this is behind wallpaper. So horizontal cr cracks going along that way, the chances are it's wall tie failure. And in an extreme case, this is an extreme case, I wanted to show you. Now you've got to bear in mind that I can't see the camera now. But hopefully you can see daylight. There, tickle, give it a tickle. Can you see it? That's straight through and outside. So when it wind, when, when the wind blows, that literally comes flying into here. It's like a big, it's like someone's cleaned a chimney, all the black shit comes out and it's like smoke. So, we've now got a structural engineer to come out 
and they've basically said that we need to take all this down and rebuild it properly. I'm going to get a second opinion because we might be able to do some Halifax stitching, so I'll do a picture of that now. We might be able to do some remedial work, so I'm not quite sure. Um, we'll see, but we've actually got a party wall surveyor, so if you do get something like this and you want to cover yourself, because what's happened is because because that is expanded, the brickwork is now tilted. So, the, so, the, so, so whoa, let's get it right, my camera. So, the brickwork should be straight and plumb. The brickwork is now like that. So, if we build this back up straight, the brickwork each side is going to be out of level. So, it's going to look a mess, and then you've got a potential claim off the next doors because yours looks better than theirs, and they're going to try and claim on you. So, this is where a party wall surveyor would come in. So in the meantime, we've just thrown some acros up to try and help take the pressure off there because of roof spread. And now I'm going to take you downstairs and I'm going to show you these properties because this, these, these lateral lines actually go down quite a number. So this is next door's property. You can, you can see some lines there just above my finger. It's a line there, there. It's very hard to see on the camera now, I appreciate that. on this one so let me stand here so there's a line there right above my finger goes all the way across there's a line here so yeah you can see this all the way down these properties horizontal lines so that's a tip for you hopefully it'll help you guys out and give a little bit of knowledge but it can be quite a costly thing because Worst case scenario is we have to take out the back of the house, knock it all down and then rebuild it back up and make it look pretty. So, HIM TV out. Hope it helps you guys. And if you like it, like, share, comment and subscribe people.